Good day Grade 11s, welcome to next lesson on trig functions. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the horizontal changes to the cosine graph. So let's get started straight away. So first thing I'm going to do is draw my basic cos graph so we can see what happens when we change things. So you guys should by now be able to do this in your sleep but if you do struggle remember that you can just pop these values into your calculator so you can pop cos of 0 into your calculator and you'll get 1, cos of 90 is 0, cos of 180 is minus 1, etc, etc. So you need to be able to do that to understand what you're getting for your cos graph. And I have said in the past that you need to be able to just draw your basic sine, cos and tan graphs so that you can work out what's changing. Okay. Please don't do that and let it be all squiggly. I'm not redrawing that. Okay, I'll just colour this in a little bit so it looks vaguely decent. You're not allowed to colour either. But you guys have pencils and erasers. I unfortunately have a digital pad and it doesn't do such nice things. Let's fill these numbers in. This is going to be 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and then back up to... One. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our calculator just like we did before and we're going to see what happens if we now change this angle, if we now make it theta minus 90. So let's get out our calculator and let's clear it. Okay, now we're going to say cos of theta minus 90. So we're going to go cos of bracket minus 360 minus 90. Remember again, your calculator has to be in degrees and we get a value of zero. Now let's do the next one to see if we can get a pattern. So we get cos of minus 270 minus 90 and that is one. Cos of bracket minus 180 minus 90 is 0. Now grade 11's from your knowledge of what we did in the sine graph lesson you can start seeing a pattern with this minus 90 but let's have a look at this so we've got cos of bracket now we've got minus 90 whoopsie let's just go minus 90 minus 90 close bracket equals that becomes minus 1 and then we've got cos of bracket 0 0 minus 90 close bracket equals 0. So if I had to plot this now do you see that at minus 360 we're at 0 at minus 270 we're at 1 minus 180 we're at 0, minus 90 we're at minus 1 and at 0 we are now at, I mean at 0 we're at 0. So if I have to draw this, do you see that this graph is moving over? Okay, where I'd normally be at um, 3 minus 360, I'm now at minus 270. Where I'm normally at minus 270, I'm now at minus 180. Where I'm normally at minus 90, I'm now going to be at zero. And if we just continue this, and I am actually going to plug these numbers in just to prove it to you. If we go cos of bracket 90 minus 90, but 90 minus 90 is zero, so it's the equivalent of cos of zero, which should therefore be one. It is one. So do you see that we are moving up by that? So we are shifting over this graph by 90 degrees when we're shifting it over to the right. We're shifting it over to the right. So therefore the next value has to be, where would it normally be at 90? 90 is normally at zero, so at 180 it's going to be at zero. Where it normally would be at minus 180 usually it's at minus 1 so now it's going to be at minus 1 at 270 and at 270 is normally 0 but we're moving up 90 degrees so now it's back up to there so that's going to be minus 1 and that there is 0. So let's have a look at this do you see that the amplitude of both these graphs hasn't changed the amplitude is still 1 the range is still minus 1 1 
and the period of the graph do you see that for the blue graph we've got a period of 360 degrees and the period of the red graph is still 360 degrees so the period hasn't changed all that has happened is that we've shifted this graph over to the right let's do another example so this time we're looking at cos theta again but this time we're doing cos theta plus 60 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just by drawing my basic cos graph again so the red graph this time is the basic cos graph. Okay, and then it goes like this. And then it goes like that. Where I'm letting that be 1 and this is minus 1. And we fill in the values, we've got 1, 0, minus 1. I'm skipping minus 150, we'll talk about that in a minute. Minus 90 is going to be 0. Minus 0, it is 1. At 90, at 90, it is 0. At 180, it's minus 1. At 270, it's 0. And 360 is 1. Now, the amplitude of this is still 1. As we know, the range is from minus 1 to 1, and the period is 360 degrees, our basic cos graph. Now we're going to be looking at, and shall we choose, I don't know, this beautiful blue there. Now we're going to be looking at cos of theta plus 60, and again what we're going to do is we're going to put the numbers in the calculator and see what we get. So let's do that. So, cos of bracket minus 360 plus 60 gives me 0 0.5 so that there is 0 0.5 so that's over there then to do minus 270 so we got cos of bracket minus 270 plus 60 close bracket equals minus 0 0.87 minus 0 0.87 okay Let's do cos of bracket minus 180 plus 60, close bracket, that is minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5. Now let's do minus 150 and you'll see in a bit why I've included these extra numbers here. So if we've got cos of bracket minus 150 plus 60, close bracket, we end up with 0. That is 0. If we go cos of bracket minus 90 plus 60, we end up at 0 0.87, 0 0.87. If I go cos of bracket minus 60 plus 60, close bracket, I get 1. cos of bracket 0 plus 60 which is obviously just cos of 60 which is again 0 0.5 this time I've included 30 so if I go cos of bracket 30 plus 60 close bracket I end up at 0 cos of bracket 90 plus 60 close bracket, which is minus 0 0.87, cos of bracket 120 plus 60 bracket is equal to minus 1. And I think let's just stop for that. Okay, now let's carry on. So cos of bracket 180 plus 60 close bracket is equal to minus 0 0.5 and then cos of bracket 210 plus 60 close bracket is equal to 0. Now grade 11's I know this is tedious but you don't have to do this every time you just have to do this the first time to understand what's going on. Once you understand what's going on you don't actually have to 
fill in all these numbers because you'll have to use logic to work out um, so let me just use brackets um, you'll have logic that you can use to work out what's going on with these graphs that's 0 0.5 okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these numbers here first I'm going to plot these numbers first and then see what happens so at minus 150 we're at zero okay well let's start at minus 180 at minus 180 we're at minus a half which is over here at minus 150 we're at zero so this here is 135 so that there is about 150 and we're at zero at minus 90 we are at 0 0.87 at minus 60, which is about over here, we're at 1. At 0, we're back at 0 0.5. Okay. At 30 degrees, we're at 0. So 30 degrees is about here. Okay. At 90 degrees, we're at minus 0.87. At 120, now 120, this is 90, this is 135, so 120 is about here, we're at negative 1. 180, we're back at negative 0.5, and at 210, which is about over here, we're at 0. So if I had to plot this, if I had to plot this, whoopsie, do you see that what's happening is that this graph has been shifted over and in this case the graph has been shifted over to the left and has been shifted over to the left by 60 degrees. How do I know this? Because at 0 degrees, okay, it used to be at 1, but now at minus 60 it's at 1. At 90 degrees, it used to be 0, but now at 90 minus 60, which is 30 degrees, it is at 0. So this graph has been shifted over by 60 degrees to the left-hand side. Now, grade 11s, the reason I knew to put this in is because firstly, I've done this for before, and secondly, because I know that my significant points are at 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. So I thought to myself, what do I need to add or subtract to this to get me to those significant points? So minus 60 plus 60 gets me back to 0. 30 plus 60 gets me to 90. 120 plus 60 gets me to 180. 210 plus 60 gets me to 270. So therefore, I knew that the basic cos graph had significant points at those numbers there, at the 270, 180, your 90, your 0, etc, etc. So I thought, what do I need to do to make those get back to the significant points? But from now on, you don't need to do that because all that you need to do is think to yourself, okay, fine, this plus tells me it's been moved over to the left and it's been moved over to the left by the 60 degrees, okay, where it means that if wherever it would normally be at naught, it's now going to be at naught minus 60. Wherever it would be at 90, it's going to now be at 90 minus 60, which is 30, and so on and so on. Notice that the amplitude is still 1, the range is still minus 1, 1, and the period hasn't changed at all. It still takes a full 360 degrees to finish your thing, so therefore that there is still 360 degrees. So the effect of P is this, if your P is greater than zero, in other words, it's a positive, then what happens? It moves this graph over to the left. This was the original, the dot is the original, and it's moved it over to the left. Whereas if the P is smaller than zero, in other words, it's a negative number, in other words, like minus 40, for example, what does it do? It moves it over to the right. So here was your original and it moves it over to the right. So grade 11 is your final standard form of your cos graph, okay, is A, cos k theta plus p plus q, and remember grade 11s, they can only within the exam guidelines and curriculum give you two changes, so do not panic and think you're going to get all of these in one graph, they're not going to do that to you. 
So let's talk about it again. Just let's make sure you know what's going on. A is your amplitude. So if you've got an A that's bigger than one, then you've got a big graph. If A is smaller than one, then you have a little graph. Okay, right? K, if your K is bigger than one, bigger than one, then what happens is, for example, that might be two, then what happens to your period? Your period gets halved, your period gets smaller, whereas if your K is smaller than one, your period increases. P, remember this is the opposite to what you would normally think, so if it's a plus P, it's been shifted to the left, whereas if it's a minus P, it's been shifted to the right but luckily the vertical shifts are always the same plus is up and negative is down grade 11s you need to know not only how to draw these and apply these changes but also if i give you a graph you need to be able to work out what's been changed right that's it grade 11s have a lovely day